Today I'm doing a review of the Magicycle 52 volt high energy e-bike and it has a lot to offer and the price is reasonable. Now this bike was sent to me by Magicycle for review. Um, I'm not paid anything to tell you anything special. They just send it and the review is mine and the opinions are mine. Well, it's still winter here in Montana, but the wind's not blowing. I'll take a little light dusting of snow anytime. Although when I was unloading the bike and getting ready to do this review, I panicked because I thought my coat was leaking down. I don't even think this coat is down. <laughs> uh, but it turns out these little tiny downy flakes are snowflakes on the, on the coat. Boy, it sure didn't look like it. Well, this is a four inch by 26 inch fat tire e-bike. It's got a medium sized frame on it or an 18 inch frame. Hub drive motor, rear rack, step through model. This one is called the Midnight Black. It looks black, but when you shine light on it, it's actually a blue, a really dark blue. The way you see it is exactly how it comes. It's got uh, free accessories that come with it that make the value even better on the bike. We'll get into those in just a moment, just giving you an overview here, what it looks like. The company only makes two models. They make the top bar model and they make this step-through model. I always prefer the step-throughs at my age. It's just so much easier to get your leg through there than trying to swing it over the top, especially if you've got a bunch of stuff stored on the uh, rear rack. Like I mentioned, the tires are four inches wide, 26 inch wheel diameter. These are puncture resistant all-terrain Kenda tires. And the, the bike is designed for all riding situations, whether you're riding it around the city or you're riding it out on trails or in snow or soft sand, this bike is designed to handle that. Size-wise, it'll handle riders from five foot three to six foot four. Like other e-bikes I've tested, uh, this one has a 750 watt rear motor. That's the largest motor you're allowed to have on an e-bike in the United States for on-road use. Now the difference in this motor is it puts out 86 nanometers of torque, which is six nanometer, nanometers of torque bigger than any of the other bikes that I've tested. So this one is supposed to have uh, quite a bit more power. We'll see about that when we go up the hills. Like it says, it's 52 volts. The battery is 15 amp hours and it's 780 watts. This is going to give you, uh, they say 30 to 55 miles of range. And I don't think that's overstated. From the other batteries I've ridden this size and mo with the same motor, that's what I've been getting. So if you're just laying on the throttle a lot or even doing throttle only on level surfaces, you should see 30 miles easily on this bike. With pedal assist, and it has seven le levels of pedal assist, uh, you, you could see 55 miles on this bike. And it comes with a three amp battery charger. Most of the chargers I see on the e-bikes are two. And then the nicer bikes have three amp chargers. Now that, that's gonna charge this battery in three to five hours, and that's a fast charge. Now the bike has a um, all aluminum welded frame and a weight limit of 350 pounds for rider and cargo together. Now I'm gonna get this out for a ride here shortly and we'll test out some of the parameters on the bike. It comes with a factory setting of seven levels of pedal assist that you can go up through from, um, from no pedal assist up to the highest level of pedal assist. Here's what the manufacturer says about the 52 volt system on this bike. It says the 52 volt system is basically a 48 volt system with a wider range of operation that averages four volts higher at any given point than a 48 volt system. 
It says, at any given point across the entire battery range from full charge to discharge, the 52 volt system gives you 10% more power and a longer sustained discharge rate than a 42 volt system. I know the display is a little hard to see in this light. It is a, a color display. I can see it easily. With all this bright snow here, it's probably not gonna show up too good on camera. Uh, it's easy to use. It's got the battery level up here, and it's got your speed here, e either in kilometers or miles per hour, your trip down here, and your pedal level assistance down here. Now you can change this to the odometer, to the max speed, to the average speed, to the time of your ride, and back to trip here. This is a wattage gauge up here that shows you how many watts you're using at any given moment. And that helps you to adjust the power so you can get the best economy if you want it, if you want to do that. Now this is a class three bike and I've got the top speed right now set at 28 miles an hour. It comes set at 20 miles an hour when you get it. Just depends on what the speed limits are in your area. And actually I've got mine set higher than the speed limit, but I, I ride mostly on trails here. To make adjustments to the display, all you do is push the plus and the minus together. And then you get this nice screen that shows the different levels. You can go through the different, scroll through the different things here. There's the wheel size, the speed limit where you can set that, the brightness of the display, voltage, advanced settings, how long you want the bike to stay on or off, you know, before it shuts off on its own. I got it set at five minutes. The units, that would be whether it's in Imperial or, or metric. Imperials for us Americans. You can put a password in on this bike if you want to. Go to flat factory settings there, adjust the display, and down here is exit. This is a really easy system to use and it's the easiest system I've come across so far, rather than having to go into P settings. This is really simple. Anybody can make adjustments on this bike the way it's set up and do it easily. On the handlebars up here, we got a bell. And it's a nice pleasant one to warn people on the trail that you're coming up behind them. It's got your speed settings here and the on and off up here. This is your left brake, which is the front. Of course, here's your display. On the right side, it's got a seven speed Shimano uh, shifter. And that's speed up here, or down, you know, into the higher gears, and then the push the button down here to go into the lower gears. Right brake, and over here is a twist throttle. I like the half twist throttle because you can twist in how much you want and then grip the throttle and just hold it right there. Thumb thr throttles, my thumb tends to get tired after a while, and as I'm bouncing around on the bike, my thumb is doing this on it. <laughs> but twist throttle, you just twist it to where you want it and then hold. The front sprocket is double guarded, which I really like. It's got a, a metal guard on the outside and on the inside that helps keep your clothing from getting caught in the sprocket itself. This is a 42 tooth front sprocket, and it comes back to a Shimano Altus rear derailleur and this is a 14 to 28 uh, tooth stack back here. The bike has Tektro Aries mechanical disc brakes with 180 millimeter discs front and rear. It doesn't have rear suspension, but it does have a nice front suspension, which is adjustable. You can uh, dial in more spring pressure on the left side up here. Uh, I tend to leave it all the way soft. I find that's that's very pleasant for my riding and I do go off-road too, so I just like it where it's at. And if you want to make the front suspension hard for better control, uh, you can lock out the front suspension entirely over here. And uh, this is a quarter turn. It says open and lock on it, just like that. It's got metal pedals on it that do have reflectors and it's got the reflectors in the wheels too. And the sidewalls on the tires are highly reflective also, which is nice for night riding. Like I mentioned, everything you see on the bike comes with it. And it's got a really nice heavy duty welded rear rack rated at 25 kilograms. And what is that? About 60 pounds. 
for the rear rack. It also came with this strap and it clips here and on the other side and you can slide things underneath. The seat looks comfortable. It's well padded. Looks like you could ride on that for hours and you'd be all right. And it's got the wider seat tube on it, uh, which would make it stronger. It doesn't have the narrow tube. It's got a pretty wide tube on it. It came with this bike alarm, which uses a key fob to activate. That's activated and then push the gray button down here and it double beeps to show that it's deactivated. In its activated mode, if you shake the bike, it lets out a loud squeal. There it's activated. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, that's loud. That's piercing. That's a nice feature. The fenders are included. Also came with this nice uh, top bar rack here, which uh, you can put your phone, slide your phone in here, and it says it's a touch screen design, so I'm assuming you can control your phone through the touch screen. And then if you open it up, there's room inside for, oh, maybe a pair of gloves and uh, your keys, your wallet, things like that, although I wouldn't want to put my wallet in here, but there is room for gloves and, and some items uh, that you might want to store in there. Maybe a little tool kit. That's a good place for a tool kit. And the tool kit for the bike does fit easily inside. Very nice. That's good. I'm going to put my cell phone in here and see if the touchscreen feature works. It does. It works very well. Comes with a front headlight, rear tail light, and I did get a chance to ride this at night last night, and the it's a nice flood. You can see, I depend on my lights mostly so other people can see me, but this did light up the road pretty well in front of me. It's kind of a wide angle beam. The rear tail light is bright, and uh, front or rear brakes makes the uh, brake light come on. Other things that the bike comes with, it comes with a lock, a cable lock, owner's manual and assembly manual, and this is a good manual, it's uh, written well. It comes with every tool you need to put the bike together and also to service it. This is the uh, battery charger I mentioned, and it's uh, air-cooled, it's got its own fan in it, and it's a 3 amp charger, give you those quick charging times. It even came with a pair of white gloves to keep your hands clean while you put the bike together. And it came with a really nice baseball cap. I like that. Everything I need for a winter ride. Got the windscreen on top of my helmet, be wearing my stocking cap underneath. Got goggles to keep my eyes from watering. Got a face mask here, absolutely necessary, covers my throat too, and gloves, good gloves, and hand warmers to go inside. Now every e-bike I try seems to have a different operating system. The operating system on this one is very similar, if not the same, as a Hemiway bike. And uh, I like it a lot. Like right now, I'm on pedal assist level number one, and I'm in, oh, sixth gear here. But the thing is, I can keep pedaling at this mild assist level, and I can keep accelerating, and it'll keep assisting me all the way up to my max speed. Some bikes have different power levels, And they also have speed limits on each level. So I don't mind that either. It's just different. 
This one has no speed limit on, e on any level. And right now I'm pedaling harder and it'll keep assisting me the same amount. Now, if I go to pedal assist level number two, uh, that's pretty nice right there. I like to ride in two. And it would be hard to get up to 28 miles an hour in pedal assist level number two. But you could do it and it would keep helping you. Number three is quite a bit of a level of assist. Doing 17 miles an hour here. Oh, it's cold. Four. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> I'm really zipping now. And then you go five, six, and seven. Of course, the other thing though, is that on any of those assist levels, even number one, I can come in with the throttle and go right up to max speed. Okay, this is a hill. I take every e-bike I review up this hill just to see how they do. And I haven't been reporting on that, but uh, I'm gonna do it to, starting today. The most e-bikes with this size motor slow down to about 13 miles an hour on just throttle. And we'll see how this bike does with the 52 volt system and the 86 nanometers of torque. Throttle only, we'll see how we do going up this hill. Okay, I got 15 miles an hour, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19.5, 19.4. This is when the other bikes are really slowing down and this one's not. 19 miles an hour. What a difference. 19. Here's down to 18.3, 18.2 going around these curves. That is fantastic. 19.1, 19.2. Okay, that's the first time I've seen that. That was impressive. Okay, I gotta give it to Magicycle, their 52 volt system and that uh, higher nanometers, nanometers of torque on that 750 watt motor made a huge difference there. Going up a hill, maintaining 19 miles an hour all the way to the top. Just slowed down a little bit when I hit those tight current turns, but. That was a huge difference, I'm impressed. Okay, throttle only, looking pretty level, and I got 26 and a half miles an hour there. That's good. That's fast enough for any e-bike. Now with pedal assist, <laughs> twenty-seven and a half. Twenty-eight point one, twenty-eight point three. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay, on the different assist levels now, and the speed limit. Remember, I set the speed at twenty-eight. It would assist me up to twenty-eight miles an hour. 
and then the motor would stop assisting you. If you had it set at 20 miles an hour, which is where the bike comes from the factory, it would assist you up to 20 miles an hour and then stop at that point. Or your throttle would go up to 20 or 28 miles an hour, wherever you have it set, and then stop at that point. Well, that part of the ride was fun. Let's see what else this bike will do. Okay, in pedal assist level number one, the power comes in very gently, it doesn't jerk you. Of course, as you go up on pedal assist level, like if I had it up in number seven, let's try that from a stop. Okay, now power assist level number seven. Uh, by the way, I'm in seventh gear here. About a half a revolution on the pedal. Uh, that's actually not too bad either. And away we go. That's pretty smooth. Brakes are pretty positive. Anytime you get a new bike, it takes a little while for the pads to break in, and they may need adjusted a little bit too. Let's try the braking again. Yeah, I was able to lock up the rear tire there. Well, that's a steep hill, but with the walk assist feature, the bike propels itself up the hill and kind of drags you along with it. <laughs> it came up the hill easy. Not me, the bike. Okay. See that hill right there? I take the off-road bikes up that hill and I have a real tough time at the very, very top all the time. Some of them I don't make it and I have to get off just before I reach the top. Uh, let's see how this bike does with its better power ratio that it's got, which has been pretty surprising. But okay, I'm in first gear, power assist level five or seven, which is the top. If I don't fall off here, we'll see how it does. Now I can't stand up and pedal because of my knees. Oh my, this is just going right up over. That was no trouble at all. Holy moly, that was nice. Yeah, that was something else. I'm impressed. The brakes are okay. I would like to see hydraulic brakes on it, but these are all right. They're not bottom shelf brakes either. They put decent uh, brake calipers on it and brake pads. That's pretty nice. Let's go see what other kind of trouble we can get into out here. It shifts fast and smooth. I had to adjust the gears a little bit, the rear derailleur. And uh, now let me show you what I'm talking about because every e-bike I've gotten, I've had to do this. See the rear derailleur here? There's an adjustment right here. And just in shipping, this cable stretches from the factory and you've got to back this out counterclockwise, three or four turns 
If you don't do that, it won't shift into, into the lowest gear. You'll only be able to get the bottom gears here. But anyways, once you adjust it, it's easy. You just back it out until it shifts fine. That's all. A little trial and error and away you go. I also tighten the brakes up. You can see where it was right here. And I just take one of the Allen wrenches that it came with. All the U-bikes are the same. These cables stretch. Um, hydraulic uh, brakes, you don't have that problem, but on mechanical brakes you do. So I just loosen this and I pull the cable through and I tighten it down until it feels right up at the handlebars. But um, there's nothing wrong with mechanical brakes, but you do have to adjust them. If you ride your bike daily, you probably have to adjust these about every two weeks. But you do it mainly right here to get, this gets the um, majority of the play out. And then if you want to fine tune, you fine tune it down here, this little knurled knob here, or up at the handlebars, same thing. This is a lock ring, and this is what you turn. You turn this part to adjust it, and this part locks it right here. Just to get the feel that you want. I like plenty of brake on mine. Now this has a safety feature too. It has a power lockout. You'll see that each brake has two cables going to it. The brake cable itself and then an electrical connector. With that electrical connector there on either side brake, when you push the throttle, it won't go anywhere because it, it locks the motor out. If I take my hand off the brake over here, then it'll go. Touch the brake and it locks the motor out. That's a safety feature and a good one. Yeah, I'm motoring uphill here and it's just breezing right along. Stop! Okay, I will. Go. All right. Okay, I brought you all up here for a reason. I'll show you. Okay, here's the thing. This is pea gravel here. And I had my uh, T1 cargo bike up on this last week, a week before, and I couldn't ride it in here because the pea gravel was too deep. I had to ride it over on the side. Now that, that has uh, 20 inch rims on it and a little narrower tire. Now I'm thinking that with this 26 inch wheel and four inch tires, um, I'm not gonna have any trouble with this pea gravel. Let's see. Pea gravel is kind of deep. See, I'm kind of sliding around here a bit. But I can maneuver it. I'm doing all right. Yeah, I couldn't do this with the 20 inch wheels. I had to get off of it. This is all right. Well, I won't say that was easy, but it was totally maneuverable. That was all right. So the 26 inch wheels with the four inch fat tire did make a big difference back there. Well, it's not the most beautiful day for reviewing an e-bike. Everybody else does it in the bright sunshine. <laughs> if I waited for that, I'd be waiting until June here. <laughs> this is the beginning of March. Well, this bike is just super maneuverable. It's easy. This is making me look like a better rider than I am. And the brakes are quiet. If they get noisy, it means that they're dirty or they got a little oil on them or something. They need to be cleaned. Your brake discs. Okay, you see that hill over there with that road that goes around this way? 
that's a hill that I have to walk up on e-bikes. Let's go see how this bike does over there. Oh, what a beautiful day. Okay, let's stop right here. And uh, put it up in the highest level of pedal assist, which is seven. And before I get to that hill, I'll have it all shifted down here. Down into the first gear. There we go. When you use throttle only. See how far it gets on throttle only, which it shouldn't go all the way. Okay, right about here. And now I'm pedaling. Okay, it's doing it. It did it. Another little stretch over here. Throttle only, throttle only right now. Now kicking in with the pedals. And it did it. Okay. That's the first time I've come up that hill without having to get off and walk. Pretty nice. Well, I got it out here and got it dirty for you. <laughs> and I didn't intend to be out here this long, but I've been having a blast. Now it's starting to get cold. The sky is getting darker and uh, I know we've got more snow coming. But uh, this bike, Magicycle, only basically makes one bike. They make it in two different models though. They make one with a top bar and they make this step through model, which I prefer. But because they only make the one bike, they do it really well. It's well thought out, nicely designed and high quality. I don't just come out and rave about a bike very often, but I'm raving about this one. I like it a lot. And the price is right. It's currently at $15.89 and it has free shipping on it. It comes with a two year warranty and that covers the battery and the motor. So uh, it's a safe buy with that. I always say, if you wanna know something about a company, look at their warranty and a two year warranty is excellent. Well, it's time for me to head back. I hope you enjoyed the review as much as I enjoyed this ride this morning. I'm going back for some hot coffee. See you around.